Today we've got a really exciting open evening for the herbal medicine course. Uh, what's fantastic is that we are now launching our herbal medicine course for online students, as well as of course offering that for in-class students as well. Our herbal medicine course is exciting, it's up to date, um, and it's a really practical course. So tonight we are telling prospective students about what our herbal medicine course offers, and we're telling them about all of the really practical elements to our course, um, because from day one, when they're studying herbal medicine with us, we give them tools that they can take away and immediately use in their own lives. So CNM has been established um, for quite some time now and Herman Kepler, who's here this evening, I think some of you have seen him already, um, he was the one that started the college and had a real passion for complementary health and you know, really wanted to provide an educational establishment that could provide training, which he's done. And so now CNM is the largest training provider in the UK and Ireland. And so we basically have this unique naturopathic approach. So, um, you know, there's lots of different establishments that are providing education, but what makes CNM unique is this naturopathic philosophy. So I'll explain that to you in a moment. But it has that underpinning with all of our courses. So we're viewing um, the body as a whole, which is an important um, way to view any complementary medicine. So we have locations all over the UK and Ireland. And the beauty with this, hello, the beauty with this is that if you start your course in one location, potentially in Manchester, then you can move your studies to London if you wish to. So there's some flexibility there. Are you all local? Are you all London based? Yeah. Okay, good. So let me just explain to you that we do have uh, four diploma courses. Um, obviously, we're going to be talking this evening about herbal medicine, but we also have the nutrition, acupuncture and homeopathy. If you feel like you'd like to go on and study something else once you finish the herbal medicine. So many of us do do that. We start with one thing and then we move through all of the, the courses. So why might you study natural medicine? I'll tell you a little bit about my story, how I changed into natural medicine, that I went to work in a GP surgery um, with, uh, as a nutritional therapist once I'd finished my training. And then I noticed that the GP that was in the surgery kept going off into this little room when she'd done her consultations and all the clients would come out with this brown glass bottle. And then by lunchtime, I realised that something wasn't quite right about her being a GP. And then I realized quickly that she was a herbalist. And so every single patient that came in through the door for um, anything was treated with herbs and not drugs. And that's the point that I realized I had to go back to college and carry on studying. So, you know, any possible health condition can be treated with herbs, which is what I learned very quickly. So the GP plaque used to lure people in. And then she used to say to them, try the drugs when the herbs haven't worked. And of course, the herbs didn't ever not work. So in 15 years I worked with her, no one ever had any medication. So quite profound, really, when you hear that, isn't it? So one of the, the advantages that I found of, of working in natural medicine is there's flexibility, of course, that you can work at home um, or you can work in a practice. There's, you know, the... The natural health industry is exploding. I'm sure you'll all agree that even in the rag mags, every single day you open it and there's an article about, you know, some kind of health aspect. So there's an abundance of different ways that you can take your work in this field. Um, and, you know, working as a clinician is just one part of that. So let's have a look at, um, I'll try and understand what, um, why we might train at CNM. So CNM is, you know, has lots and lots of students, over 2,500, and is a really well-established college. So what we know about students and when they study is that if they do really high amounts of practical, um, practical aspects to the course, then the conversion rate into them being a practitioner is really high. And that's what CNM do really well. So we focus very much on practical application. So the ability of that student, once they finish the course, you know, they start seeing clients straight away because they've seen and been exposed to so many cases during the course of their studies, you know, in contrast to doing loads of work on research, learning how to write an essay and actually spending only maybe three or four percent of that course actually seeing clients they lose their confidence and they can write a good essay 
but actually then don't have the confidence to see <laughs> clients. So that's really what makes CNM unique. And all of our practitioners are actually um, lecturers. So the lecturers that we have are still seeing patients. So they stay current with what's happening, which is also important in an educational establishment that you're still out there doing it, which I'm pleased to say all of us in herbal medicine are. So let's understand what naturopathy is. Has anyone been to see a naturopath? Yeah, good. Just one of you. We don't know what you're missing, honestly. So naturopathy is a system-based healing where we believe that the body has the ability to heal itself given the right environment. So there'll be certain things that suppress um, or enhance that body's ability to repair and heal. And some of those things are what we look at in naturopathy. And that's how we basically look at the patient and look at their ability to essentially self-heal. So one of the factors that underpins naturopathy, which is interweaved into your herbal medicine course, is that the body has a vital force. And this vital force can be stimulated or suppressed. So I try and see uh, the vital force a bit like a bank balance. So that bank balance can actually be topped up by good living, herbal medicine, relaxation, fresh air. And therefore, that means that you're cash rich in your bank balance. So you're much more resilient to getting sick. Whereas if you're overdrawn with lots of drink, drugs and rock and roll, then the likelihood of you getting sick is actually much greater. So we're always looking to try and promote that vital force rather than actually to suppress it. And the other, you know, the other thing to think about is that every disease or disorder will have an initial root cause. And what we want to do is look at the root cause and try and understand not just that the person is displaying symptoms, but what happened in that person's life when their health changed. So everyone will have a critical incident in their life when their health started to change. And, you know, unpicking that with the client case is really critical to being able to get the treatment fit right. So that's what makes our courses unique, is this naturopathic backbone that really underpins um, all of the education. So understanding also that, you know, prevention is much better um, than actually just treating symptoms. It's trying, I always think we should be, it should be kind of wellness-based management or health-based. But actually I know from my own clinic that people don't come to see me when they're well, right? People come to see when they're sick, don't they? So we need to change that slant and hopefully you, you're the future, you guys, and you can help us to actually do that. So focus on kind of wellness, really, and keeping a patient well. So just lastly, before I hand over to Bobby, you know, this idea of abundant vitality is being in the best physical, but also mental shape that you can possibly be in. So many people, I ask them, um, some of my students, I say, tell me about um, what symptoms you've got. Is anyone ever symptom free? And usually people are never symptom free. And you say, you get the odd person that puts the hand up and says, I have no symptoms. And then after 10 minutes of talking to me, I realise they've got loads of symptoms. But actually those symptoms have become normal for them. I always wake up at 4am. You know, I've always been constipated. This patch of dry skin on my arm has always been there. So the symptoms are just the language of the body trying to tell you that something isn't quite right. So we want to learn to understand those symptoms so that we can understand how the person got to their current health, health state that they did. So people can have a body that might be, they think, free of symptoms, but that includes your cognitive function. So if you have negative self-thoughts all the time, we know that that affects how your immune system behaves. So it's being in the best physical shape um, and the best mental shape. So I think there's not a lot of people that can say that they're, you know, symptom free on both aspects. So it's an important factor in naturopathy that we consider. So I'm doing the naturopathy course as well, so I'm not handing you to Bobby yet. I'm going to carry on. So let me explain the structure of the naturopathy course. So it runs um, one weekend a month or one day a week. Now, if you're to study herbal medicine, this is integrated into your course material. And the, some of the topics that we look at in naturopathy, are we'll cover that in the next slide, but just so that you understand that you would have essentially assessments and a, an end of year exam as you progress through the course. So one weekend a month, some students prefer to do weekends, so they would do a Saturday and a Sunday from 10 till 6. 
because the parking is much better, transport is much better, and they enjoy London at the weekend. So this really does depend on your availability um, and obviously course availability. Um, so you could do one weekend a month or essentially one day a week. And during the course of that time, you would essentially look at an additional set of clinical tools, okay? So um, you learn to classify signs and symptoms of disease in herbal medicine, but when you learn naturopathy, you're, you're learning a whole new set of tools that will enable you to piece the picture together of the, the client's picture. So some of the things that you might look at are detoxification in much more detail. So really the body's ability to detoxify some of our environmental toxins, metals, is absolutely critical to health. And if we don't really understand detoxification in the right detail, we have an accumulation of waste and that contributes to us feeling unwell. So detoxification is critical and you cover that in quite a bit of detail in naturopathy. You also learn about um, TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, and you would explore in more detail tongue diagnosis, face and nail diagnosis. So a patient might tell you that they don't have any particular symptoms, but when you look at their tongue or that you look at their eyes, then that tells you something very different. Which leads me on to iridology, which is, you know, I had the the good fortune of studying with Peter himself uh, only last year after being in practice for 10 years. And I found it absolutely, I mean, an eye opener. It's very cheesy, but he taught me that. Um, but, you know, I used to sit in front of a patient and they would say to me, you know, I have no digestive discomfort whatsoever. And I look at the iris of the eye and that tells me something very different. And why might that be? Well, it's because you know, we learn to live with symptoms of poor digestion. We eliminate the foods that cause us issues, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't get away from the fact that there's an underlying dysfunction, which is why the gut isn't working properly. And we can see that in the iris of the eyes, and that's what you study in iridology. So I transformed my practice after so many years, and, you know, Peter delivers it beautifully. You also learn about tissue salts, um, and you would learn about first aid homeopathy, so using energy-based medicine um, in your practice. So it really does diversify your set of skills that you can use for your patients. So um, I'm going to hand you over to Bobby. So my name is Bobby Cresci. I'm the Education Director here at CNM, and I also lecture biomedicine to first-year students on our herbal medicine diploma. I am myself a practitioner, and so I speak from my own experiences when I say to you that today you can all embark upon a journey that is truly life-changing. To be able to help people is really like nothing else, and you all will be able to go away and to do that every single day of your lives. And there is truly nothing more fulfilling than being able to do that. Today I want to talk to you about biomedicine, which is the very first part of the herbal medicine qualification. Some of you are already studying nutrition, so you will, you, you will have already done that. But if you haven't done that, then biomedicine is the really core foundation to you becoming a herbalist. So the question would be why? Well, biomedicine is vital for you to understand how the body works. This is about making you safe and also effective as a practitioner. CNM as an educational institution really does pride itself on creating therapists. We're not just creating people that can pass exams. We want you to go out and be able to help people. And to do that, we need to make sure that firstly, you are safe. And then secondly, you obviously can go out and you can really make a difference to somebody's health. In biomedicine, we talk to you about how the body works. We talk to you about the different systems of the body. We talk to you about the organs that make up the body. And we also talk about how the different parts of the body all work together, which is really the fascinating part. Now we kind of layer this together so you gradually build this knowledge throughout the biomedicine course so that you can really understand what also happens when things start to go wrong. Because that is, as Rianne just said a moment ago, ultimately what you are going to be dealing with most of the time. People that are steering away from health and towards disease. So we need to pull them back in the other direction. Now to be able to do that, we need to understand a really important question, which is why? In my practice, every single patient that I see, I always think, why? Why are they sat in front of me? Why do they need my help? 
Why are they bloated? Why are they constantly tired? Why can't they sleep? Why do they have a skin condition? And that's the information that you really should be thinking about. That, that's the question that you should really be taking away from this because that's what we teach you in biomedicine. So as well as helping you understand what's happening in the body, we start to get you to think about the causes of disease. And importantly, of course, we start to give you a little bit of an insight into what you can do as a herbalist. And we also give you some other bits of advice and guidance as to what you might use in terms of nutrition, homeopathy, lifestyle advice, and so on. So here you see an overview of the lectures that you study in biomedicine. We include really fascinating topics like the digestive system, we cover the endocrine system, which is looking at hormones. We also cover topics like cancer, a really, really important topic, given, of course, the prevalence of cancer in, in today's society. So we go through some really vital subjects that then by the time you go into your specialist subject of herbal medicine, you then have this really core understanding of what's happening in the body and also what might be going wrong in the body. So in terms of studying biomedicine, we've now got the option that you can study this in class and you can also study this online. So when you study online, that does give you a lot more flexibility because you can study this on your sofa, you can study this in your kitchen, you can study this on, on the train, you can study this wherever you want to. As long as you have internet access, you can get onto the lectures and all of the exercises that it involves. You can also come into, into class, come into lectures and enjoy that interactive um, environment that you get by working with colleagues and listening to a lecture. In terms of the actual course materials that you'll be looking at, you'll be covering 20 lectures, all of which have very high quality um, PowerPoints. Um, I'm slightly biased because I have written them, but they are very good, trust me. Also included in that, um, we will be give, giving you lots of, other, uh, lots of other materials. We'll be giving you exercises, case studies. So from day one, we want you to start thinking like a practitioner. Like I said, we're making you into a therapist. We want you to start thinking like a therapist from day one as you study with us. In terms of the exams, you'll have multiple choice exams, um, which will be looking at some of the core knowledge and on top of that, you will also have two semester exams, and that's the same for the in-class and the online option. The only difference is that the exams will be in-class for in-class students, and the exams will be online for online students. And we have a very clever system set up to make sure that nobody does anything naughty and starts trying to cheat on Google, because it won't let you do it. So we have everything set up in place. It's a really great online course. And of course you can then follow on into herbal medicine and study that online if you wish, or alternatively you can study that in class. We do expect 90% attendance, which is really important because like I said, we need you to be safe and effective. And we have to make sure that you've got that foundation of knowledge so that you can be both of those. So this just gives you a little bit of a glimpse of what the online course looks like. You can see here, this is our online platform. It's very interactive, it's very colorful, there's lots of images. It's very easy to use for anybody, even people that aren't particularly great with computers. It's very straightforward. You click on any of these boxes and it opens up the lecture video. It gives you the option to jump in at different points on the lectures. So let's just say you want to look at the digestive system and you're really interested to going in and having a look at what happens in the small intestine. You can click that and it will open up that section of the video. So it's very easy to use. There are also interactive exercises. So you, for example, might have two plates of food and you might need to drag the food onto which plate suggests that it's inflammatory food, foods that create inflammation in our bodies or foods perhaps that are anti-inflammatory. So that's just to give you an idea that we're trying to get you to think how you can apply that knowledge. So just to conclude, I, as I said, am a practitioner and I am fortunate enough to be able to help patients in my practice here, but I've also had experiences of volunteering all around the world. I've worked in hospitals in Kenya, I've worked in orphanages in the Philippines, in St. Lucia, um, I've worked in a care facility in India, I've done things that really, you know, really drive me forwards to, to want to help more and more and more people. 
And the thing is that you're all capable of doing the exact same thing. There's nothing stopping you from going out there and doing these sorts of things. It is incredibly rewarding. And today is that option. There is that option there for you to go forwards and, and make a decision and to follow your dreams and become a herbalist. So um, I'm Peter Jackson Main. I am the course director for herbal medicine here at CNM. I also hold the title of uh, academic director of the college as well, which is really just an oversight function to make sure that everybody's working the way they, uh, every, the courses are working the way they should be, that students are getting satisfaction, that the academic um, side of things is, uh, you know, passes muster because we are obviously we're in, in, inspected by external bodies as well. It gives us some validation and some uh, reassurance to you as students that what we're teaching you is worth something, okay? Um, and I'm here to talk about herbal medicine, really. I, I guess, you know, we've got a few slides up here, um, and I, I, I'm kind of not a person that um, necessarily sticks closely to what's on the slides. I will probably just talk and see where it gets me, but I, I'm assuming that you're all here because you want to know about herbal medicine, right? And you're all maybe considering studying it. Um, so you know what herbs are, yeah? Good. Plants, actually. Um, and I think for me, and I want to say a little bit about how I got involved, because I was looking for something. I'd been involved in complementary medicine since I left university way back in the early 70s. Um, and I was looking for something to do, and I happened to hook up with a practitioner who said, I actually went to see her because I wasn't feeling very well, and she not only sorted my health out in three weeks flat, uh, which I was very impressed by, by giving me herbal teas and various potions and things to mix up. Um, but also she said, you seem a little bit lost and listless. You don't seem to know what you're doing in life. And I said, that's about right. And she said, well, why don't you come and study with me? I'm doing some courses. And that's where it started. She was a herbalist and she was uh, an iridologist. And those two things, although I didn't immediately study them um, uh, formally, I went back to them and that's Basically where I sit now, I'm a herbalist and I use iridology as a major diagnostic tool. Some of you I know have done the iridology with me here. Um, and that is, uh, you know, though I say so myself, we've had um, Rian talking about it as well. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonder, actually, iridology, if you understand it properly. And I'm hoping to give um, you know, the rest of you the opportunity to study that at some stage as well. But when it comes to herbs, I guess what got me into it, it's quite, uh, there was a moment I remember exactly, you know how it is when you, something life-changing happens, you remember exactly where you were, you have that thought that changes your entire direction. And I had this thought, and I was on the riverbank in Cambridge at a party, for God, you know, I don't know why, I can't remember what the party was about, but that's what was going on. Um, and I suddenly thought, I looked at the, the garden and I saw the plants and I thought, hang on a minute, medicine's easy, it's all given to us. This is the most democratic form of medicine that exists and it's there for the taking. Um, and I was really getting depressed at the time because I hadn't really been managing to get my practice together in other areas. I was doing body work, actually, um, and I even did a little bit of psychotherapy at one stage, which was a horrible disaster. Um, so I sort of turned away from that and I thought, OK, let's actually start looking at these things. And at that moment, a woman came up to me. I'm sorry, I'm clicking away here. I'm getting uh, over-enthusiastic. A woman came up to me and said, and I kind of knew her slightly, and she said, what are you thinking? And I said, well, I was just wondering about studying herbal medicine, actually. And she said, oh, that's interesting. Do you know who you're going to study it with? And as it happens, I'd heard about a course um, uh, that was going basically um, at an American school, which would come over here and was set up school here at the time. And she said, do you have any money? And I said, no. And she said, well, here's a thousand pounds. And that was what I needed. I needed 400 more, actually, but I raised that. Um, for me, that was like, whoa, actually, is that the way this works, you know? Um, so your story is going to be different. And for me, getting into herbal medicine was what revolutionized my health the first time around. And when I found it again, and particularly when I studied with this one teacher, and he's a guy called um, Dr. Schultz. I don't know whether any of you have heard of Dr. Richard Schultz from America. He got very, very famous. Um, he's the only herbalist millionaire that I know. Um, but he, he did it basically off his ideas, and his ideas were absolutely stunning. We got in front of him. He was big on detoxification, for example, something that uh, Rianne has already mentioned. We do a lot of work 
work with herbal detoxification we do at least um, you know we cover that in year one and also again in year three under therapeutics for me that's the sort of foundation of getting people healthy is you know it's we always used to talk about it in very early naturopathy days as uh, cleanse and then rebuild you can't build a healthy building if you like on land that's all cluttered up and you know and congested you have to clear the land and then you can build health so detoxification was uh, one of the sort of principles on which I based my own practice and what I noticed was exactly what I'd been promised that if you actually do that and these routines that I teach are called I call them the foundation routines uh, the, the things that you need to establish in your life to start to clear the way for health and if you make that the core of your practice then Using herbs becomes just so much more easy after that. So the kind, that's a kind of introduction to what I wanted to say about the herbal medicine course here that I think distinguishes itself from a lot of herbal medicine courses that you might hook up with elsewhere. And it is that we are not training people to become allopathic herbalists. We're not training people to think of herbs like drugs, you know, a, a herb for osteoarthritis or a herb for irritable bowel syndrome. We're, we're aiming to teach people how to think, as I think both Rianne and Bobby have already said, how to think underneath the symptom, to think about what's driving that pathology in that person. Because the same, one, two people present with asthma, yeah? And if you go to a doctor, both of those people will get an identical prescription. But if I look at them from a traditional medicine point of view, from a naturopathic standpoint, and from a, a, a herbal standpoint, I can see very clearly that this person might need a very different prescription from that person, you know? Um, and that's the joy of this. It's all about individual um, treatment, but it's about, you know, for a herbalist also, it's about the ability to know the plants in that much detail that you can almost get like an intuitive sense of what somebody needs by listening to their story. My prescriptions are usually made up by the time I get to the end of the consultation. I don't do a consultation and then say, right, now we've got to sit down and work out which herbs. The herbs are coming all the time I'm there. The herbs are like standing around me almost saying, right, you want me for this one or you want me for this one. And this is, you know, I'm not saying that it's a completely sort of woo-woo intuitive thing. What I'm saying is that what we aim to do in the herbal medicine course is to give you that depth of familiarity with the plants, with the traditional uses of the plants, with the scientific aspects of the plants as well, obviously, so that when it comes to seeing patients and prescribing, you have got this wealth of knowledge that you can immediately funnel into the practicality of uh, designing a treatment program for somebody. So I'm going to take you through the herbal um, curriculum and just tell you a little bit about how we do that and some of the things that come into it. So first of all, uh, incorporating Chinese and Ayurvedic principles. I am actually quite a big advocate of our own Western or European energetic tradition. I don't know whether any of you know about this, but you know we talk about uh, you know yin and yang in Chinese medicine, we talk about the doshas in Ayurvedic medicine, you might have heard of these things. But we have a fully developed energetic system here in the West, we just don't use it. So I teach that in year one particularly. Um, and it's, uh, you know, energetics may sound very complicated and very sophisticated when you first meet it, but it's dead simple. It's energy, it's energy, right? And it's hot or it's cold or it's moist or it's dry. And it might be a little bit drier, it might be very drier, it might be a little bit wet or it might be soaking wet. You know what I mean? Learning to recognize how these principles manifest in the body, learning to recognize how the blockages in flow of energy in the body manifest and what you know what what blockage looks like when you when you see it and when you hear people talking about their situation. And it might be you know, it might be a physical blockage, it might be like constipation, somebody mentioned, a blockage of the bowel, which obviously is never a good thing. Or it might be a blockage in the mind, it might be a sort of not being able to get your head past something that you need to take on board, like, you know, giving up sugar or, you know, coffee or, or whatever. So the blockage is, one of the things that my teacher, Dr. Schultz, said to me very early on um, in class was, the one cause of all disease is blockage. And you could hear this blockage, like a big block of something that was, and it was very visual. And it's kind of true. Now we do have, obviously we differentiate a little bit. We also talk about deficiency. So a blockage can be a sort of a, you know, a, a congealing, if you like, or a congestion in the system. But deficiency is something else. But if you think about it, think about a river that's flowing and you get a blockage. What happens on one side of the dam 
is it's too full. And what happens on the other side of it is there's not enough. So even deficiency is caused by blockage. And that's basically what we mean by, you know, when we're, we're, we're talking about the energetic principles behind um, traditional herbal medicine. So um, <clears throat> CNM herbalists are also trained in naturopathy, nutrition, tissue sorts, as we've been through all that with you, so you know about that. Chinese diagnostics. Um, I quite like Chinese diagnostics. I have to say, even though I'm, I've talked a lot about the Western energetic tradition, I actually really do like the Chinese diagnostics. I think they're very elegant. I use them all the time, particularly the pulse taking and the tongue examination. And actually, I'm about to... I've actually written a book which I shouldn't really blow my own trumpet, but I'm going to anyway. I wrote a book called Practical Iridology, which is about you know, the diagnosis through the eye. And my next book is probably going to be Iridology and Chinese Medicine because they work absolutely brilliantly together. So Chinese Medicine's been around for three and a half uh, millennia at least. Iridology's been around for 150 years. So they're very young versus the very old. But when I teach... Um, uh, iridology to a lot of people here obviously go on to study acupuncture so they're very interested in that. I actually find myself teaching um, iridology almost from a TCM standpoint you know I look at a, a de deficiency marking in the kidney area and I, t and I can talk about kidney yin or yang deficiency you know so this whole thing about um, energetics sort of suffuses everything I do and adds a dimension and a layer to what we're teaching and I really like it I don't know about you but when I'm studying I really like it when two completely different subjects suddenly come together and you see the truth behind both of them and it's one, yeah? So this is, this is part of what we try and do, is to, is to have that sort of synthetic, we call it in, in academic terms, that, that ability to synthesize, to pull things together and, and come up with a, a much sort of better way, a clearer way of seeing things. And that's what all of this is about. We give you the tools to do this on different levels with different materia medica. You know that term materia medica means basically the substances with which we work medicinally. Um, so our herbal materia medica is the plants that we use. And by the way, if you don't already know, we have a fantastic herb garden running along the side of this building, which is maintained by our herbal students. We are increasing the degree to which herbal students engage with horticulture, with growing and maintaining the garden. It's absolutely packed full of medicinal herbs, which are quite usable. Um, it was a great resource to do when I was doing the filming for the online course, which we've, we've just finished um, um, a, a trench of that. And we were actually, you know, gathering herbs from the garden and putting them in big bundles on tables and sifting through them and talking about them. It was actually wonderful fun, actually. So that is another thing that we will be doing with you in herbal medicine. Um, we will be expecting you to get to know the plants. For, you know, familiarity with plants, intimately, knowing uh, not only how to recognise them, what they look like, what their life cycle is like, but of course traditional uses, therapeutic uses, phytochemistry, all of the things we know about any of the plants, is, 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 that's, that's what we call Materia Medica. It's probably a, the, the core unit in herbal medicine is where it's a 10 lectures usually that we take you through um, the range of medicinal plants that we that we use in a certain amount of detail. Now having said that, 10 lectures for all those plants isn't very much. You are expected to go and find out about them yourself as well. So hopefully enthusiastic students will also go out there and buy their own reference material and, and do their own researches as well. That all adds to it. I learn things from my students. You know, I'm a herbalist of nearly 30 years standing, uh, but I learn things from my students. They've been out and they've had the time to go out and do certain you know, look, in, look at the latest research or whatever that maybe I haven't seen yet. So that's always great for me. Um, so there's a lot in herbal medicine. I mean, history and philosophy, for example. Uh, why do we study history? It's just a lot of dates, isn't it? History, the key word there, is story. There's a story to herbal medicine. It's an absolutely fascinating one. I just, you know, and the people involved, you know, we talk about, you probably heard of Culpepper, for example, anybody heard of Culpepper, Nicholas Culpepper, the people's herbalist? You know, these are guys who were real pioneers of what we do now. And in many ways, you know, what Nicholas Culpepper did, by the way, if you don't know, was that he studied medicine at Cambridge. Cambridge is my city, that's where I live. Um, I studied there too, but I didn't study medicine. And uh, he had a, a tragedy in his life as a result of which he got, you know, he sort of, well, I'll, you know, I don't want to, what I'm doing now, I'll change my life direction. And what he did was he took the medical knowledge that he had and he went, uh, he, he set up a shop in Spitalfields in East London um, and he treated the poor for nothing. 
and charged the rich a huge amount of money to, to be able to, uh, you know, he's a bit of a Robin Hood herbalist, this one. Um, he also did things like he translated medical texts, which were only available in Latin and Greek, into English so that ordinary people could understand them. He wrote tracts on herbal medicine specifically aimed at teaching ordinary people how to use the, the plants that grew on their doorstep. And we can see this tradition in herbalists uh, wherever you look, actually. Certainly in the North American tradition, as I said, that was where I studied. Um, we have, for example, the very great Dr. Christopher, Dr. John Christopher. And he said the same thing. He said, all we need to do is go out into our backyards and see what's there. It's all there for us. You know, We don't need to be producing high-priced supplements and all the rest of it. We can do that. But actually, what this is about is inspiring people how to use plants and, how, and, and in very, very simple ways. So you'll be taught that. You'll be taught how to make plant preparations and how to, you know, to, to calculate strength and dosage and all of those things as well. Um, I can only give you a sort of a, a very brief idea of all the things that come into it. Um, the biochemistry of herbs, I want to say a little bit about that. Um, I, you know, the, the problem with biochemistry is a relatively new science. And if you think about it this way, if you think about the way research on drugs is done, they take one drug, which is a single molecule, it might be a quite a complex bond, but it's a single molecule, and they test it on one symptom. And that's what they do, right? Herbs, you've got about, uh, well, hundreds potentially of molecules in one plant. How are you going to do a clinical trial on that? Um, how are you going to even begin to calculate the complexity of a herb? So whilst we do look at that, and we look, for example, at certain plants that contain particular phytochemicals like Alkaloids, you might have heard of. Alkaloids are quite powerful. They're, they're what you get in your coffee in the morning. Caffeine is an alkaloid. They generally have quite powerful effects on people. So it's worth knowing that. It's worth knowing that if a plant has a powerful chemical in it, you might want to go easy on it. Yeah, But it's not about that. It's not just about the phytochemistry. The phytochemistry supports the traditional use, in my view, and not the other way around. Okay. So when somebody comes along and says, I'm, I remember a student of ours did a project on ginkgo biloba. Have you heard that one? Ginkgo, uh, it's for circulation, particularly good for cognitive abilities. It's, we call it a nootropic, which means that it improves the function of the mind. And um, he was a doctor, he was a consultant. And um, yeah, we have doctors study with us, it's, it's great. And he was a great student. And he did his final project on ginkgo. And because of the way that these trials are conducted, he came up with, I think it was, he, he had 12 trials he looked at. Six of them said it worked, six of them said it didn't work. When he put the data all together, completely inconclusive. And I said to him, does that mean when you get out in practice as a herbalist that you're going to stop using ginkgo to help people's memory? And he said, absolutely not. Because by that time, he'd had enough grounding in the traditional applications of ginkgo to know that that was not the right way to assess a herb. And the other thing about herbal practice, of course, and maybe giving you too much information to stop me if I'm you know, blinding you with science, is that we hardly ever use one herb. Most of the time we're combining, we're putting herbs together, uh, we're, we're looking at the synergy between different plants, between the different elements in a, it's called making formulae. And the nice thing about a formula, you can have formulae that are like general, that you can go and buy in a supermarket or a, a, you know, a, pharma, a pharmacy or somewhere like that. But the best formulae, the best formula is the one that I make for you and you and you. And it's completely different from the one that I make for you or you or you. Do you see what I'm saying? So this is the individualization of it and choosing our plants from that position of knowing a lot about them. And the other thing I'd like to say, actually, about all of this is that some of it looks, you know, history and philosophy, Chinese and Ayurvedic principles, biochemistry. It looks pretty heavy-duty stuff. Uh, biochemistry is not the favourite subject for a lot of herbalists. I'll, I'll, I'll say that for free. Uh, but here's the thing. What, what we've tried to do, in, particularly when, as we've been developing the uh, online lectures, is to make sure that every lecture gives you something that you can go away and use immediately, right? So it's not about waiting, it's not about getting through all of this stuff. You will be given things, practical suggestions, practical exercises, applications at every turn, basically. So that, and I say this to people when I teach iridology, and I teach six days of iridology in the naturopathy study course. On day one, you're going to start being an iridologist. You're going to go home, you're going to be able to look at somebody's eyes and tell them something useful 
about themselves. Okay, um, I think I've clicked too far. Right, so let's have a quick look at the overview here. Um, we have uh, herbal medicine comes in three parts, basically. If you come to the classroom course, the attendance course, you'll be doing one part one in one year, part two in the second year, and part three in the third year. It's a three-year course. But if you do it online, you can do it faster than that if you want. Okay. And just to mention, we are also introducing, I think somebody already did mention it, for those of you who might already have studied nutrition and acupuncture, particularly, you've got your diplomas, we are introducing a two-year postgraduate uh, course in herbal medicine which will upgrade you to a herbalist so you'll have that uh, key as well of course you don't have to study all the things you've already studied you've already studied biochem as a nutritionist you've already studied you know research and practitioner development there are lots of things that we can you know, exonerate you from uh, so that you can do the course in in two years but it is predicated on the fact that you already have a diploma so you're already in the in the study pipeline so to speak the online course you can take from scratch and uh, you know if that's your choice uh, as Bobby has said, there are certain advantages to studying online. You don't have to turn up every time. You can do it at your own pace, either slower or faster. Um, and uh, you get the same level of support. You get the same learning materials, whichever way you do. Yeah. Um, so in part one, we, we get the biomedicine, the naturopathy, which is uh, or the, one of the naturopathy modules, naturopathy study, we call it. That's the bit uh, we do. We cover uh, nutrition to some extent. We, we cover homeopathy. We cover um, traditional Chinese medicine. We cover naturopathy itself. We a little bit of herbal medicine in there as well. And we do the iridology, which is also your introduction to clinics. So bearing in mind that the whole focus of this is to get you into practice, it starts in naturopathy. Um, now the iridology content, of course, there's a lot of theory there as well. You have to know what you're doing. But my, the way I've developed that, the iridology a component of naturopathy study, it's very, very practical. And it's basically about the one-to-one -one consultation that you have with a patient. It's getting you on that from day one, uh, you know, pairing up in class, look into each other's eyes and talking about health concerns and learning that way as well. So that is a clinical input, if you like, as well. And there's obviously some observation. You get to watch me do a session and things like that there too. Okay. So there's a very, very clear focus on, um, on the practical element right from the start and particularly developing that one-to-one -one relationship with, with a patient, uh, the helping relationship, if you like. Um, just to mention, just a slight tangent here, but just to mention that uh, if you really resonate with iridology, and a lot of people do, uh, you can go on to get a full diploma in iridology too. It's called postgraduate. It's not really postgraduate, but it's, a, it's an add-on that you can get. You get a certificate in iridology as part of naturopathy, but you couldn't really join an iridology professional association until you've done a little bit more. So we do another six, six days in the autumn, usually, uh, that if for people who want to um, to lift their iridology qualification to a full professional certified um, uh, or, or accredited iridology, okay, just to say that's available. So that's uh, biomedicine, naturopathy, and herbal medicine. One, we start off with the basics. We teach you about the history, the basic principles, Western energetics, as I've said. We teach you about a little bit more about um, uh, Ayurvedic and um, traditional Chinese energetics. And we teach you about plant sciences. Now, uh, in ordinary terms, that's probably known as botany. Um, but we take you through, we call it plant sciences because I think that sounds quite nice. We take you through um, plant anatomy, the parts of the plant, what they look like. Plant physiology, how plants live, their biofunctions, if you like, and their processes. Um, taxonomy, which is a, a, a word that if you know what that means, do you know what that means? Taxonomy, it's all about classification, the classification system. That's quite important because um, you might know that plants have at least two names. So if I say dandelion to you, how many people can give me the name for the dandelion? Okay, It's Taraxacum officinalis. Taraxacum means lion's teeth. And officinalis means, officinalis is actually an interesting one in herbal medicine terms. Officinalis means uh, the official herb. That's the one we use. That's the, the, the pharmaceutical standard, if you like. Okay. So the name of the herb in Latin is, gives you a lot of clues about you know, what it's for, what it looks like, how people think of it, how people have used it from time immemorial, etc. Okay. So 
that's really useful because actually when you come to the common names of plants, very often you'll find, uh, take a, a very famous example from North America, you find people calling things snake root. There are at least three plants that are called snake root. So which one, are you, which one do you mean? If you identify them by their Latin names, you always get the right one. And it's an international language for the recognition of plants. So that's important. And last but not least in plant sciences, horticulture. How do you grow things? Anybody grow plants already? Yeah, I thought you did. I don't know why. Yeah, Just had a feeling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, getting hands on. And there's actually, um, you know, a couple of exercises as well for you to actually get involved in that and do a write up on it and, uh, and maybe even be, be assessed on it at some stage as well. So that element of really getting your hands dirty and it starts out there in our garden, of course. But if you're doing the online course, you can do it in your own garden. Just keep a record of what you do. Yeah. And um, start learning. That's, that's level one. We also do something called practitioner development. This is where we introduce you to uh, that sort of dynamic of the one-to-one -one therapeutic relationship, that, that business of seeing a person and how to conduct that professionally, um, how to look after yourself while you're doing it, which is also very important. And we introduce you to the concept of research um, in that uh, particular unit as well. And we don't, here's the thing, what, I don't know what you think when you hear the word research, but I'll warrant that it's not the same as what we've got lined up. So in other words, there are many, many different ways of thinking about research, um, and we obviously make you aware of that, but we have our own take on it as well. And we are starting to instigate research programs in this college as well. Layla and I are working on something at the moment. Okay, so there's a lot to get involved with. That's just level one, right? Then we go to level two, uh, herbal medicine two and naturopathic principles. And Herbal Medicine 3 stands alone. That's a bit ominous. Why aren't we doing anything else? Well, Herbal Medicine 3 is a very intense year. Apart from anything, you're expected... Because this is a degree-level course, right? Um, it's accredited at degree level. So what we're trying to do is also give you a range of different skills that you might need as a professional. And now, most of Year 3 is about therapeutics, actually. So it's, this is going through each system of the body, if it happens to be that... We, we take cancer in on that. We take working with the young, working with old people, working with pregnant people. Um, and all of that sort of goes into the therapeutics. So you get a very sort of solid grounding in how to approach things from that point of view. Uh, but the other big thing that you do at level three is you write your uh, final uh, major project, so to, so to speak, your research project. And this is a piece of research. I'm not going to tell you too much about it because it may be about to change by the time you get there. But it's a very exciting piece of work. It gets you involved in, you know, making your own uh, researches in, um, you know, in literature, literature search, basically, and gathering information and organising it in, uh, in a proper way. And that one of the reasons we do that is not only just to keep the academic level up uh, and give ourselves the, the equivalent of, a, of an honours degree, but also because actually, you know, there are many ways that you could go once you leave CNM. I think um, Rianne's already covered this to some extent. But in herbal medicine, if you think about it, you could be a practitioner. That's what I chose to do. I, I, I you know, see maybe 20, 30 people a week um, as a practitioner. Um, but you could also be into medicine making. Yeah, you could get involved in the pharmaceutical side, not the pharmaceutical, the farm, the pharmacy side of things. Uh, actually, how to make medicines and become an expert. That we have, you know, the people who supply our herbal medicines are trained as herbalists first and foremost, and they've just chosen to spe specialize. And many of them also specialize in growing, so they produce their medicines from the ground upwards. And that's another thing you can do. But you can also get into writing. I think there's a slide coming up uh, shortly, actually. You know, writing articles for uh, prominent uh, um, natural medicine journals and even maybe um, some academic journals as well. So giving you the skills to do academic writing uh, means that, you know, you may not choose to do it ever again. A lot of people come out after doing their dissertation saying, thank God that's over. I'm never, ever going to do that again. But actually, a lot of people say, wow, you know, I've actually discovered. And we've had people publish um, uh, those final dissertations in the herbal uh, professional literature as well. So you know, it's just another avenue to explore. Um, 
I think I've probably done the next three slides. Um, herbal medicine two, yes, just to say a little bit about that. That's where you get your first uh, major core subject, which is Materia Medica. Uh, so the major part of year two will be focused on that in-depth study of plants. Say, we, we might start with the cardiovascular system. We give you a list of plants, but, but we study them in depth. So we, get, we take you through each plant. We, we introduce you to it if it's out there. Uh, we discuss the traditional uses. We do a sort of little monograph, as it's called, on each plant. Um, you get a few exercises and assessments with that as well. And then the other part of year two, the other really important part, is uh, how to make medicines. Okay, pharmacy. Yeah. Um, herbal medicine three, mainly therapeutics. Uh, as I said, um, you'll also learn some clinical diagnostic skills, things that doctors do. How to palpate the abdomen, how to take blood pressure, how to... Um, you know, do neurological assessments and that sort of thing. So, you know, we bring you up to the level where, uh, you know, uh, the, the people who are sort of, and actually, I have to say, actually, as I say, the people who developed the herbal core curriculum in this country, uh, that unfortunately was me. Um, and uh, in the early days, uh, I wrote it. Um, I don't often care to think about that much because I have actually revised my opinion about uh, a lot of it since then. And we do things a little bit differently now, which is all to the good. We all, we're all rolling with the changes and developing as we go along. Um, but that part of the curriculum which demands that we actually are effective practitioners, which is something that we're very, very strong on, but also that we're safe and responsible practitioners. Okay, So this is kind of... Um, uh, a big watchword, you know, if you read some, I don't know how, whether any of you have tracked uh, some of the things that have been said over the past 20 years or so in government about herbal medicine and how dangerous it is, you know. Uh, so everybody's sort of got this idea that um, that we need to be seen to be safe. Now, you ask me about it, there's it's quite difficult to do anybody any harm with herbs um, unless you really don't know what you're doing. Um, but, and there are obviously some powerful plants out there. We, we just you know, we know what we're doing, basically. So that's, you know, competence is what we build into this uh, training at every level so that, you know, competence comes from knowledge. It's as simple as that. Um, and, yeah, um, we... Uh, the other thing about it, of course, is that through all the levels, sort of one, uh, part one, part two, part three, we are also doing clinical training. That starts in year one. Um, first of all, and, and that's built on year on year or unit by unit. So in year one, it's observation. You just get to observe a practitioner like myself or one of my team uh, doing consultations in front of the class. You get to help make up the prescriptions in our dispensary just down the corridor there. When you reach year two, you do a little bit more than that. You start getting involved with the dispensary yourself and learning the skills of, of how to you know, combine herbs and make, make up remedies and things. Uh, then you will start to um, take more responsibility. Uh, there's a sort of a rite of passage which occurs halfway through year two where you uh, undergo what's called a case-taking assessment. That means that you take a case under supervision and then the supervisor says, right, that's okay, you're fine, you can now take cases. At that point, everything goes mental because at that point, before that, we've been seeing maybe three or four patients a day, one after the other. At that point, we have five clinic rooms there, we might get 20 patients a day um, with, it, with each of those rooms going flat out um, all day long. So we do have very full, very busy clinics and how, uh, not, not, I, I don't want to say stress because I don't find it stressful, it's exhilarating. You get that many patients in and if your systems are working well and we've worked on ours over many years now, it's a fantastic experience to be in a clinic uh, where people are coming in in droves and leaving feeling better just for having been here, never mind they haven't even taken the medicine yet, you know, because they're having a great experience here, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, so that, uh, and students, this is where students really pull together as well, I find in clinical practice, clinic, the clinical unit. So by the time that all ends, you are running that clinic. I'm not doing it. I'm just sitting there saying, okay, I'll sign it off, I have to do that, sign the paperwork, but you're running it. And that's fantastic to see. And we have, a, you know, I think, the, uh, the level of expertise that's gained by our students through the three years of study um, is phenomenal from that point of view. And by the way, if you are choosing to study online, you will be coming, if you're a UK student, you'll be coming and doing your clinical training with us in our clinic here as well. Here's a few people. I think this is bringing me nearly to the end. A few people. Schaff, student of ours back about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. Do you remember Schaff at all? No. 
absolutely brilliant guy. He uh, lives in Birmingham. He has a very, very busy practice up there. Um, he um, particularly um, has made his home amongst his own community, which is uh, Asian Muslim. What can I say about Jenya? She is just so amazing. She, come, she comes from a, a black background in Russian finance, uh, and she's just built this incredible place in Notting Hill, Cloud 12, her, I, her, her sort of dream spa. And she does herbal medicine treatments, bodywork treatments, nutrition, uh, you know, everything that's going on there. It's an absolutely fantastic place, and she's a great practitioner and she was a fantastic student. She also comes in uh, to help us as a clinic assistant. That's the other thing you can do having finished your herbal medicine training. You can continue coming back to college. Uh, you don't have to pay for it and you get the opportunity to help us run the clinics, which is great experience. And she's been doing a bit of that. Um, and then we have uh, Alex, another one of our graduates. Uh, again, fantastic. You, you, sometimes you can get a sense of a student, they're really going to go a long way. Um, he's pitched himself quite high. I didn't even know this before I saw this slide earlier today, but that's great. Alex um, is probably going to be taken on to our teaching team, actually. He's, he's, he, you'll love him. Alex is very, very popular. Um, and finally, we have Layla. Layla who has created the largest and most influential naturopathic association in the UK. And that is not an exaggeration. The ANP is a phenomenon. Since Layla took it over two years ago, something like that, um, it has just, uh, it's just gone from strength to strength. It is the leading uh, professional body for uh, naturopaths and the, the body that you know, you're all encouraged to join. I should just say there is another body that I strongly encourage you to join. That's the Association of Master Herbalists, which is for specifically for herbalists and which I have been chairman of for most of its life, except that thankfully I gave it up last Saturday and handed it over to somebody else because I am far too busy at the moment. But, but this is an association that we built up particularly for naturopathic herbalists. So it's a, it's a natural home. And the AMH accredits the uh, CNM course. That's our external um, accreditation. Um, I'm going to hand over to Layla now, I think, am I? Yes, I am. I'm going to hand. There's a, some numbers for you to think about. My story is like a lot of other students' stories uh, because I had no knowledge or experience of natural health at all, at all. My view of food was that if you could chew it and swallow it, it was food. If you could drink it, it was liquid. Like I had absolutely no idea, and I had a life, a corporate life. Um, I got married, went on holidays, all of the of the traditional things, and then I had a baby. And when Alara, who I talk about all the time, was three months old, she became outrageously sick out of nowhere. Like I had no idea what was wrong with her. And we went from doctor to doctor to doctor. We traveled around. We went to specialists in other countries. We tried absolutely everything in the world. And she just became, for some reason, which I now understand, allergic to the whole entire world. You know, the wind blew, she would swell up and we'd go to hospital. She touched grass, she would swell up and we'd go to hospital. And I had no idea what was going on. So I started to research. And I don't know if any of you have been sick or cared for somebody that's sick or uh, loved somebody that was sick, but it really does. It's not just the sickness that affects you. It affects every single aspect of your life. You can't work, you can't sleep, you can't function, you can't concentrate because you're being so depleted by this experience of not knowing what to do and just watching someone you care about suffer all the time. So I started to do research and research and research, like why is this happening? And none of the doctors could give me an answer. And eventually I made a list of all these like different things that I'd never heard of before, like acupuncture on the list, you know, Reiki on the list, reflexology on the list. And I went from professional to professional to professional and I tried all of these different things like, please help me, please make her be okay. And this took about nine to 10 months because by the time I found a herbalist, Alara was almost one years old. And I walked into the herbalist and by this stage she's covered in bandages and the doctor wants to put her on oral steroids and she can't move her limbs because her skin is so sore and dis dis discom uncomfortable all the time. And the herbalist said to me, um, she's hot. And I was like, yeah, yeah, she's hot. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, and she said, well, you know, my recommendation is, and I had like a big bag of medications that I took around every day, medication for her skin, medication for her allergies, medication for her sleep, medication for absolutely everything, medication for the bath, medication for out of the bath, medication for the for the washing. And we like lived in like a clinic and nobody was allowed in and out. I would like scream and shout at people. If they came to my house and they smelt of something, I would get really upset with them. And I, we lost a lot of friends during that period of time, a lot mm -hmm. of friends. Um, and she said, well, um, take that stuff and chuck it in the bin, remove all of her bandages, uh, let her run around and give her this tea. And I like looked at my husband and I was like, she's nuts. <laughs> she's crazy. <laughs> But I had tried everything else by that point and I thought as when she gave me the bag of herbs and told me to make a tea, I was like, you know what, it's very easy. I can go home and I can make a tea and I can give it to Alara, that's not a problem. And then I said to her, like I said to every professional that we saw, how long until we see a difference? You know, because we tried lots of things by then and they said to me, she said to me like five to seven days. And no one said that to me before, five to seven days. Like people are talking to me about getting used to it, about getting, you know, mental, he mental help to help with the stress and help with the bandages and help with the creams and help with the baths and help, help, help. And she said to me, five to seven days and then come back. And I was like, okay, I can, I can do that. That's, that's very easy. I went home, I boiled the herbs, I made the tea. I held my child down. She didn't want to take it, tasted like crap. And, uh, I forced the tea in her and the first thing that happened was she became extremely hungry and she was asking me, f she was, she just become very hungry, very thirsty, she was drinking like mad and I got worried because she hadn't been like that before, she was a very sickly child. So I phoned the herbalist and I said, you know, she's, what do I do? Like, you know, she's asking me for food and she's asking me for a drink and she said, she told me exactly what to feed her and what to drink and she just gave her gallons of water gallons of boiled green vegetables, just fill her up with it and put the tea in the bath, put it absolutely everywhere. And I followed her instruction. And seven days later, there wasn't that much change, but my daughter was calm. She was, I noticed that she was calmer and she was eating more. And for me, that was a change. You know, up until that point, nothing changed. Everything just only, only was getting worse. So we went back for another round of herbs and another round of herbs and three weeks later, my daughter slept through the night for the first time since she was born. And then about another three or four weeks after that, she stopped being uncomfortable and she stopped scratching her skin and stuff like that. And then a couple of months after that, she started to heal. And then a year later, she wasn't allergic to anything except cow's milk protein. And for me, that was like, popping out of the matrix. And I said to my husband, I can't do anything except go and learn herbs. Like I just don't, I just need to understand what happened. Now that I've learned herbs, I understand what happened. And I understand that if I had this information, I would have known immediately what to do. And since learning herbs, I now know that everyone in a five mile radius of me will be okay. And the reason I want to share this story is because maybe you don't want to be a herbalist, but maybe there's something in you that you want to do something about natural health and helping people. And I just want you to know that this qualification is definitely a pathway to that. And we need more people on the team. So that's why they added me to the schedule. Um, and those people that you just saw on the, on the slides, they are my classmates. We were a good class. Yeah. And Peter has a habit of producing uh, extremely powerful uh, students that go on to do really good things. So during, while I'm at the AMP, so these are the prices of the study. And if you have any other questions, please speak to our course consultants. Does anybody want to speak to them at the moment? Um, and as, uh, as the president of the AMP, I'm in a very uh, lucky position of knowing a lot about what the students do after they graduate. So when you are a student, you get a lot of support. You get all of the traditional things that students should get. You get a portal, access to research, a tutor. You get a lot of support. Um, CLM is accredited all over the country. So normally what happens is when students graduate, they phone AMP and they ask me, what can I do or what should I do? You know, that little initial uh, process that they go through when they graduate, they tend to phone AMP and I kind of help them through that process. Um, 
There's also short courses. So for those people who are not ready to do a full diploma and they just want to dip their toe in the water, the short courses are a good way of kind of testing out whether it's for you or not. A lot of people are not fully decided and a short course kind of gives you the flavour of the career that you might want to go into. So here's what CNM graduates tend to do. And what I want to highlight for you here is that the natural health world is currently booming. There is so much demand for this information and so little professionals. And when I speak to the government and I say, you need to have this as part of the healthcare system, they say to me, Leila, there's not enough of you. There's just not enough of you. You know, there's not enough professionals to cater for one borough, let alone the whole nation. And so what our graduates tend to do is they go out there and it's like, it's like a playground. There's just so much to do, so many gaps to fill, so much business, so many people that are wanting this information that failure is, is very difficult. So you might know some of these people. So Madeline Shaw, she's extremely well known. Elizabeth Peyton Jones, she's extremely well known. Um, Keris Marsden now teaches here. Elsa Jones, deliciously Ella. <laughs> They are all a part of the CNM alumni. Um, there's also a thriving media sector that is also growing. I mean, everybody's into health now. Everybody's into feeling better, getting well. And so if you did want to do something like writing or publishing or advertising or events, that's all available for you as well. This course, these courses give you the language to communicate on that level and they need you like seriously, like the world out there, they need you. Um, here are some of our graduates that are featured in media. So we talk to about 20 media every single month and we feature a graduate in all of those media every single month. So when you do graduate and you need a bit of support or promotion, just give us a call and we're there for you. Well, we've just had a promotional event to try to draw people into the herbal medicine course because we're also launching uh, our online course today and our two-year postgraduate diploma for people who already have a diploma in nutrition or acupuncture can now study herbal medicine and become a herbalist in two years. Herbs are plants, are um, accessible, democratic, cheap, and I'm not saying that because you know th there's any particular virtue in cheapness versus, versus expense, but because a lot of people can't afford, um, you know, uh, and you know, if we get a situation in this country where uh, medicines start to cost more and more, we're, we're short of them because of you know political um, conditions or whatever, then uh, we're going to need to rely a lot more on on stuff that's just growing. And this is the thing about herbs; they just grow. You can't stop them. And a lot of the herbs that we've got in our gardens that, that people call weeds and spray with Roundup, etc., are highly valuable, highly prized uh, medicinal herbs like dandelion and plantain, which we were talking about on the presentation today. You know, so these are this is this is my contention that um, uh, that, that we we have a, a, just a huge resource out there, and it, it's free actually. Um, you know, I, I've done things with my patients, for example, where I've said, okay, so uh, you haven't got much money, fine, so I'll tell you how to harvest nettles in your own garden and make them into medicines. And they generally say, well, actually, you're all right, give me a pack of nettle tea, uh, which I can do as well. But you know what I mean? It's really making it accessible. Herbs are very, very accessible. And actually, a lot of people are already using them. You use them culinary herbs, for example. Um, and it's not, you know, culinary herbs is a, is, is a subject all in itself. It's not just about health, um, I'm sorry, it's not just about taste, um, it's also about health because many of the herbs we use in a culinary context are also uh, you know, digestive stimulants, uh, carminatives as we call them, which sort of help to ease digestive spasm and cramping and just help the whole thing to go down a lot better. Yeah? So I mean there are many ways you can use herbs, but you know, if you want to learn how to use herbal medicine as a, as a rational system of medicine, then that's why you study herbs, to know more about it, to be able to, you know, you could study herbs. We have a lot of students who come because they just want to know more for their families and their friends and themselves. Uh, but of course, you know, once you do that, you get the bug and you find out how easy it is to help people using herbs. Uh, I think there are some advantages to studying online, actually. Um, but I think, you know, online learning is the way things are going to go in the future, so we've got to address it. And I think, as I said, there are advantages to it as well. You know, people being able to study in their own time, being able to study wherever in the world they are, um, you know, being able to take their time, if you like. Um, so I don't see why not. Yeah, absolutely. So why should um, 
somebody with a diploma already, like nutrition or acupuncture, why should they come and study herbal medicine? Well, okay. I have heard so many nutrition students come out of nutrition and say, either I wish I'd studied herbs or I want to study herbs now. That speaks for itself. Um, you know, they do a certain amount of herbal medicine in nutrition, but the way we do it in herbal medicine is in much more depth. And I think they just get, you know, you, you have a feeling for this and you just think, I want to know more about that. This is amazing. Acupuncture, I mean, acupuncture is part of a medicine system in China that goes hand in hand with herbs and body work as well. So it's a whole system of medicine. So I think without herbs, you don't have a complete system of medicine.